I'm Rob Lucuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby here with Kieran Hines, who stars as Pop in Kenneth Branagh's semi-autobiographical coming-of-age fable, Belfast. First of all, Kieran, congratulations on your Oscar nomination. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed. It's so exciting. Tell us, um, I guess, how you found out and your initial reaction. Um, well, it's, it's quietly very thrilling. So we put it like that. A man of a certain age says that. And uh, it's also... Uh, very gratifying uh, that, and quite humbling that uh, your peers or people that you work with has uh, such a like a, a public value of your work. So um, yeah, I'm quietly delighted. Um, and I found out weirdly I was on my way from uh, London to Paris, and I was going through security, and I had forgotten that the because people have been talking about the nominations for a while, and I'd forgotten about them because I was domestically challenged in London with my daughter and I was heading to my wife in Paris where I was going to be domestically challenged again. And I was going through security and my phone went off and uh, I saw uh, a little ping and it was from my agent. And I thought, oh, that's probably to thank me because I sent him a couple of bottles of wine for his birthday yesterday. So it had just arrived today. And then it went through security, my phone went and then there was about a, another five or six pings. And then I was told to go straight through passport control. And by the time I got through that, there was about 20 messages and I realized something either terrible had happened or uh, there was good news. And it turned out that uh, the nominations had been announced and everybody knew that I'd, uh, I'd made the list and they were purporting to be very pleased for me. So, <laughs> I would, yeah, I'd suggest they were, you know, like because you've, you've scored nominations across the board at SAG and BAFTA and Creek's choice and so this is terribly exciting you know I remember back in the day I was so disappointed when you missed out on an Emmy nomination for Rome when you played Caesar uh, I'm still not over that so I'm very glad that the that this academy has uh, deemed it necessary to include you in this list it's very cool um, so now I, I'm sure that you're asked this um, off, often but I'm really curious to be honest given that you're born and bred in Belfast um, you know how does this film actually resonate with you personally when you think back on shooting it and then when you when you see it on the big screen um really we, we didn't shoot it in belfast at all we, due to covid constrictions and all that that they, they created a set just out in the middle of the english countryside uh using a disused uh, aerodrome and an old school and uh, they constructed then the streets uh and it was it was kind of magical even because it was a set it was even more magical as i went down and i said these are the streets that i grew up on these are, I mean, I grew up in, my childhood would have been late 50s, early 60s. Ken's was the 60s. And, uh, but it was, you know, we didn't change that much in, in the north of uh, Ireland at that time. Progress was rather slow. And uh, something I was just transported back. But I was also, uh, Rob, I was just transported by the script when I first read it, to be honest. When he sent me the script and I, uh, I started to read it and I just uh, identified very much. It brought me uh, back to my roots, having left Belfast uh, to begin a career in the theatre about 45 years ago. Uh, and I'd go back like a couple of times a year, always. And, uh, but you think you've gone somewhere else. But in fact, what that showed me was the, the roots of my culture and my, my soul, as it were, were still deeply embedded inside me going back into a story like that. That's amazing. Um, it just goes to show the level of authenticity and truthfulness that Sir Kenneth tried to bring to the screen, particularly with his whole team that uh, put this thing together. I recall it was filmed in Surrey, and which is obviously not Belfast, the other side of the of the water. Um, so that's you know that's amazing, and it brings me to this. I felt I don't know. I felt this unexpected kinship with Pop. Um, obviously, he was written with a degree of. Uh, I don't know, nostalgia and reverence, um, like you would always think about with your grandfather. But it's reinforced by your portrayal, I, I think. Um, it feels very sincere to me and instinctive, maybe. So I was just wondering what was the key for you in portraying him like that, very authentically? The key, the key came, well, it also, be, you know, when you start with the script and you realise as you read it, you see the, the rhythm of the language that Ken is using, the, the stoicism of the people, the heart of the people, that comes off the page a bit. Then when you are going to slip into some kind of a costume and you start to look at the colours that you're wearing, uh, 
that a English costume designer, Charlotte Walter, brilliant, starts putting you in clothes that put you in mind of your grandfather and wonder where did they find this stuff? And then there's something, maybe a, a shirt that your father might have worn. And it's very strange. You, you don't know, that is obviously a costume designer working to the peak of, of, her, of her practice. But at the same time, there was something that became very personal just with what she was putting on me that made me connect again and put images in my mind of, of uh, my father, my grandfather. And then, so when I went on set, uh, and the built set and was out in the backyard or so that, suddenly I go like this is all whoa, way back in time uh, it's kind of uh, it was magical and it was it was very beautiful to be to be brought back in there as well and for Ken to give us the uh, give us the space even though it was a very small place we lived in to give us the space to be able to create the ambience and the atmosphere of that couple's relationship yeah, I, I'm so glad you said stoicism because it was a word that I was thinking of when thinking back on the performance that you and Dame Judy gave as the grandparents because those two characters could have been maybe a little less developed as Katrina and Jamie's and even Jude's, but they weren't. They're, they feel very lived into me. Um, and I just think, what, what, what did it, did you learn anything more about, you know, the, the Northern Irish culture in particular, given that's your background? Did you, did it remind you of that stoicism? And where do you think that stoicism comes from for people in Belfast? I think it's, especially, I mean, there's a bit in the film where it actually just comes on the television, apart from the, uh, the violence that is just about to, has just broken out and the political situation. There's little information on the television screen that goes like the Belfast is now being, uh, just been announced as being the most economically depressed city in the whole of the United Kingdom. And that influences people life and they a lot of people lived on a bread line they may have had a job but they wouldn't have got paid very much there was a huge amount of unemployment in belfast at the time and people that whole sense of community of helping where you could to lend to to reach out that was very much part of the uh, of the spirit of the soul of the northern irish community i'm sure it's the same in many communities you know it's not something special but they were they they weren't uh, bemoaning their lot you know they they came this is probably, you know, central heating had just arrived, you know. These are people who suffered cold winters without much heating, you know. A couple of bits of coal and maybe a bit of stick of wood. They were hard people. And they didn't, they, I, and I remember that in my grandparents as well, you know. they More than a stoicism, they, they were, uh, they had a sense of, of a morality about, uh, you had, life wasn't easy. And that's all right. But it doesn't mean to say that you shouldn't help where you can, not take, give where you can. It's kind of a, 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 a moral uh, insistence of those people, of that community, that that's what you would do. And I know that the politics and the religious divide then produce something else. But at the base of the heart of the people, it was that idea, that root. And I think... Ken understood that. Indeed, I think that's why um, he immediately, I think the first person he cast was Judy, because then... Um, he and Judy are so close and worked 10 or 11 times together. And he thought he must have loved his grandmother when he was little. And now I'm this age and who do I love the most? Like, a, it's yeah. Judy and Dench and she's going to be grand. And I think after that, he maybe thought, my home going to get pop. So it's just lovely the way people think. I think. Yeah, it would be so great if there was maybe more of that in today's day and age, given all the stuff that we're all dealing with collectively. But anyway, yeah. that's a whole other interview. Um, it is a issue, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to do just a, a brief deep dive into a couple of the key scenes um, for Pop because um, I, I just, as I, as I mentioned, I, I felt really kind of close to him. I obviously didn't know him at all, but it reminded me of my own, of my own ancestors. Um, so there's a scene where uh, Buddy and his two grandparents are on the couch. It's, it's, a, it's a key scene. Um, Pop breaks into song and eventually cajoles granny to get up and dance with him um it's so beautiful it's a moment of calm in the movie it's kind of even probably the nice that the most uplifting part of the movie i would say um so what's the highlight i guess of working with dame judy not working but dancing with dame judy well 
I have to tell you that uh, not being a natural, well, we, we can all sing a little, but I got lovely coaching from a, a lovely Welshman, and the Welsh are great singers, from mm -hmm. Michael Roberts, who coached me on singing that rather famous song from Camelot. Uh, and that was fun just to try and learn to sing something and, and have the confidence to sing. But the idea of Ken saying, and you've got to get her up to give her a dance, I <laughs> think. That is going to be uh, something because in the mood, I can see that uh, in the in her role in the character she is, it's not going to be easier to get her up. She's uh, not best pleased with Pop, uh, with his kind of, uh, uh, I guess, his ideas of there's other things out there beyond God uh, kind of image. And uh, but there, there was a fantastic moment when you realize 50 years of love against 50 years of sufferance of somebody yeah. uh, is a deep, deep connection. Yeah. As one learns to suffer and love and love and suffer. And that's what kind of, and I'd kind of seen that in older people's relationships as well. And uh, and I thought Ken had, in his writing, had just, just painted it very beautifully, delicately, and yeah. put his faith in us. And, uh, and off we went. And, um, you know, working to work with Judy is just, um, I don't know. I don't say it's a dream come true, but it is uh, one of the special moments in your life when you actually have to connect deeply and quickly with somebody and say, like, 50 years together, darling, what do you think? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and she's, she's, uh, she's a, a, a just a, a mistress of her art, really. Yeah, she's one of the greats. Um, I love it how Pop, He's always telling her how beautiful she is and how much he loves her. And she'll always just give him a dig. That is so <laughs> common. You know, I've seen that, you know, in my own family. <laughs> and it made me really love those two even more. Um, you know, I, I don't know what clip they're going to use at the Oscars for you. If they have clips, hopefully they do. The scenes in the hospital are so just heartbreaking. They're beautiful. When Pop says, um, if they can't understand you, then they're not listening and that's their problem. I mean, that's the kind of wisdom you want to hear from your Pop. Uh, wherever you go, whatever you become, uh, that'll always be the truth. So I love that kind of stuff. Um, and I just wonder what you thought of when you, when you were actually shooting those scenes. Um, I imagine it would have felt very personal for Kenneth to take that in from the director's chair. And what, what was that was what it was like on set? Um, it was at that point um, we had a very established a relationship between uh, Jude and myself, which was kind of equal in his uh, in how they felt with each other. His innocence playing against my supposed wisdom, but you know, kind of cheap little pearls as they were, um, and. The, the joy of the two of them, you could see in his face his love for his grand. I mean, I could see it. I could see him I, just looking at me with just joy and love. And I could see how much, how, be, how lovely his spirit was, how beautiful he was. And that I didn't, I wanted to give him the advice for life because I know I'm not going to be around, but I don't want him to carry anything heavy. I don't want to actually put a weight on those little shoulders. But I want him to say a few words that will register with him deeply, which is about his name and where he's from. And it's lovely. I mean, Ken wrote, you're not just from Belfast. You're from Belfast 15. Yeah. You know, that, I mean, that's great writing. You know, just even that tiny word to say, like, you're not Belfast. You're, you're from this little part of Belfast. You know, it's the postcode. And, and therefore, in the context of that, as we reach out, to immediate family, to extended family, to uh, neighbors, to community. It's kind of what it's all about really, isn't it? And yeah. that's why I, I believe Ken wrote a deeply human film, humanist film, I, I, I'm using his own experience and his family as a template. Yeah, I just think he really stuck the landing because it's such a personal story for him, but I've heard it from so many people that they relate. I mean, when you relate to something and you can empathise with something on screen, it just hits harder. When the last thing we hear from Pop is, I'm going nowhere, you won't find me. And then we get that shot of um, Jamie's character, Pa, holding his hand. That, to me, is such beautiful simplicity. And I just wonder, um, when all is said and done, do you did, did that kind of work 
make you think about your lineage and and the people ahead of you you know people who are going to outlive you does it make you think about your legacy in your own yeah yeah, it does, yeah. Yeah, it does. I mean, not about what have I left behind. It's like, how will they get on? Yeah. How will they do? Especially as, you know, in the last 40 years or something, the, the planet itself has gone into some kind of overkill and we're not, you know, moving fast to say, like, what legacy are we going to leave for the next generations? Uh, in, yeah, you feel that very strongly, uh, especially this generation who are in their 20s and there's so much for them now to face as they start their adult life it's 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 mind-blowing we can only do all the little things that we do to try and make it uh to help along the way i guess and uh, to be aware of what we do and to and to uh, to make sacrifices where we can you know not just for the sake of being holy or sacred but to say so it's a positive help it may be a tiny little thing but it's we've all got to make uh, some kind of effort for the responsibility of the generations to come. Absolutely. You know, Chekhov, Chekhov used to write these things in his great yeah. plays. And not for us, but for our children's children. Maybe we can behave better, you know? Yeah. I, I, I hope people take that out, lesson out of Belfast, if nothing else. And I guess that's one of the reasons why it's been so rapturously received all over the world, um, and particularly back home in Belfast. Did you ever really expect the film to become so popular and beloved by critics and by audiences? Um, yeah, no, no, we we'll never do. I mean, Ken made a story of his life. He didn't know that this was going to, whatever between the the, the brilliant editing of Una Niganili, who's just edited it in a way oh. with Ken, and it just keeps flowing and dancing and moving. But, you know, and there's so many little scenes that could be staccato or whatever. But to me, when I saw it, I just said, wow, it's just pouring out. And, you know, stories are like, and also he's giving space for the audience to see how they're feeling, you know, just, but nothing, nothing heavy. And, you know, having Van Morrison at the heart of like, this is Belfast blues, baby, as opposed to kind of sentimental strings or big thing, you know, just like, this is the hard, rainy, gray nose city. And here's the people. And uh, I thought it was very bold. I think um, it's it, people, a couple of friends who've seen it. And I, I, I know some people have objections to it and that's fine. I, I don't mind, you know, we've all got different tastes. That's fine for me. I know that some uh, may have a political agenda about it, uh, which I do dismiss because I, I think there's politics and everything, everything yeah. you do. But if you can't for a moment suspend your own personal agenda, through the eyes of a nine-year-old and see what they see for a moment. I don't, I, how, how can we actually open up to each other to discuss things? But I, that's, um, I, I can see that. But I also think it's such a, a positive film, a positive film through the, even despite the, the, the violence and the parental strife, it's such a positive film for us all, I think. Yeah, I think it was one of the films many of us needed um, in this really challenging time that we're all sharing. Um, Kieran, thank you very much for your time. Congratulations on the Oscars. I, I'm, I'll be rooting for you from my couch and uh, I hope to see you next time. Thank you very much, John. Thank you.